Hey everyone, this is Bram Kanstein and you're listening to Bitcoin for Millennials. Together with my guests on this podcast, I go on a journey to discover how our current financial system works, why it's flawed and why Bitcoin is the most relevant technology that you, my fellow millennials, should adopt. In this episode, I'm joined by Chris Knight, aka Bitcoin Chris. He's a financial coach and mentor helping people analyze and repair their credit. He's also an entrepreneur, investor and author and his upcoming book is called Fiat Dad, Bitcoin Dad. That's a, that's a great take <laughs> on the OG title, man. <laughs> He's a very outspoken Bitcoin believer and I'm excited to talk with him. Welcome, man. Thank you for having me. And absolutely, I'm excited to, to chat with you and you know spread the gospel of Satoshi Nakamoto and Bitcoin. So how, how did you get into Bitcoin? I'd love to hear that because I, I just off mic, I told you I saw your music, you're a rapper as well. So obviously rappers love money. They love money. <laughs> Was that the entry? <laughs> no, actually, I talk, I talk down on the rappers because, you know, um, they teach, they don't teach, they influence us to spend money frivolously on things that really don't matter, right? And mm -hmm. they, they influence us, you know, the culture is cool and all that, you know, and, it's, and, you know, we influence the, you know, the culture, hip hop influences, you know, the world, right? But that wasn't how I was influ uh, influenced by um, Bitcoin. I was actually introduced to Bitcoin by Max and Stacy, Max Kaiser, Stacy Herbert. And I actually yeah. was working a normal job. I used to work at Hilton at a call center. And somehow I stumbled across, you know, Bitcoin and some shit coins. And back then, this is probably 20, this was 2016. Back then, I had no idea about money. I had no idea what Bitcoin was. I had no idea what shit coins were. I just saw, you know, you can make a lot of money from it. So instead of taking phone calls, I was actually, you know, buying Bitcoin and buying shit coins and, you know, trying to figure out how to, you know, get into it. And I'm pretty tech savvy. So buying the shit coins on all these crazy exchanges and, you know, doing all that was easy to me. But instead of taking phone calls, I actually bought my first Bitcoin was on Coinbase. Um, so, you know, I was on Coinbase buying Bitcoin. And when I saw Bitcoin, it was like five, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. And I'm like and I was thinking of it as a stock, you know, I'm like, there's no way I'm buying this stock for a thousand dollars because I'm so used to stocks moving two percent, five percent, ten percent, you know, those baby gains. Right. Stocks don't really move mm -hmm. like that. But when Bitcoin went from that's that's when the Bitcoin bull market started. Right. Because Bitcoin went from $1,000 to $20,000. And, you know, again, I didn't really know much about it until I started learning from Max and Stacy. So shout out to the OGs, the grandpa, grandma of Bitcoin, you know, Max and Stacy. I got to meet them as well. They follow me as well on Twitter. Amazing. Yeah. And um, I, I'm really cool with them. I chat with them all the time. And, you know, they're, they're, they're the best in my opinion. So without them, I wouldn't be a Bitcoiner. Oh man, that's dope. Well, actually, Max is uh, one of my biggest influences as well. Uh, I always I had to laugh when I saw what his company was called. It was called Heisenberg Capital, named after uh, after Walter White <laughs> in Breaking Breaking Bad. Absolutely. But um, yeah, like anyone who's listening who doesn't know Max Kaiser, you should just search him on YouTube and then you know why he's so influential. Like he, he's been uh, calling Bitcoin, I think, from 10 cents or a dollar. I don't even know. Three dollars. I have no clue. And he gave like thousands of Bitcoin away to people just to, you know, ed educate them. So, uh, oh, man, that's that's dope. That's fun. Fun that you share that. But you saw it as a stock before or like a money making something. Now you see it as something different. Absolutely, I think. Absolutely. Like what? What was the? What was your aha moment there? Like when? <laughs> when did that view change? Well, seeing how Max and Stacy on the Kaiser Report before they took down RT on YouTube, they would explain the Cantillionaire effect. They would explain what's going on with the money. They would explain what's going on with inflation. They would explain what's going on over in China, and they would just explain to you know to their audience you know, what's, what's really going on with our money. And so growing up, I knew that I knew something was wrong with the money. I just, did, I didn't have an understanding of what was going on with the money. So they were able to break it down for me in a way that I was able to understand. And the best way to, un for me, the best way I like to explain it is, you know, it's real estate is the best way I like to explain how, how much the money's gone yeah, down. So you said Bitcoin is the real real estate. So That's right. <laughs> the only property that you right. can own. Um, and even though I'm a, a proponent of cash flowing businesses, 
such as real estate. Um, I, I, Bitcoin is, you know, number one, I have Bitcoin tatted on my face. That's a, that's a B for Bitcoin on my face. If you didn't know, oh, I got one, I got one hey, on my arm. So what's up? got you. Excellent. <laughs> so, you know, back in when our parents were growing up, well, I'm in America, so I know you're overseas in Europe, but here in America, you know, when our parents were growing up, they could buy a house for 30, 40, 50 grand. And, you know, that's because the dollar was so strong back then. And now the same house is worth $350,000. And that's not because of the value of the house going up. It's the value of our dollar and the purchasing power going down. So that just shows you how much inflation has pretty much just eliminated and annihilated our purchasing power. And that was the great aha moment for me. And as well as, you know, the 2008 crisis, I remember that like it was yesterday because, you know, everyone that I know when, when the banks crashed, the, the depression, everybody was hurting. So I remembered. Like I remember all going through these times with our money and understanding that they bailed out the banks, but you know, we got the short end of the stick. And you know, the only way to opt out of the system was to buy Bitcoin. And once I figured that out, you know, I'm a rebel. I'm a rebel off rip, right? And I'm I'm very defiant, and like you said, I'm very outspoken. So once I understood how we were being screwed by our governments and by the money printing, I was like, you know what? I'm all in. I'm all the way in. And how long would you say did it take you to go from this is a cool investment to <laughs> to understanding what you just said? Um, it took me a little bit. It took me a little bit of time because you do have to do the work, right? And you have to learn and you have mm -hmm. to go. I think most people have to go through a bear cycle to understand it. Um, I actually rode Bitcoin up to 20,000 and all the way back down to 3,000. And then I bought more. I went up to 10K, then went back down to 3,000. So I was actually in the space that whole time and I was just accumulating at that time and the great thing is is in 2017 when we hit that bubble I actually started my business I actually started credit repair and started to learn about you know money and credit in the United States so mm -hmm. by the time 2020 came around before the pandemic I was still working at a job but I was able to understand how credit works in America and I was able to get my brother and myself over a hundred thousand dollars on credit and I bought Bitcoin right before the bull run happened. And I, and I was actually contemplating on whether I should buy real estate or if I should buy Bitcoin. <clears throat> and you know, the only reason why real estate is good is again, the cash flow and the tax advantages of it. So I know British, you know, British says, if you buy real estate, you're stupid. I, I, I can agree with that, but it depends on what your outcome and what you're trying to accomplish. Is. So if you're looking to accomplish mm -hmm. saving money on taxes, and if you're looking to accomplish, you know, cash flow and you're not using your hard earned money, that's why we use credit. We use the bank's money to buy assets, but cash flow to pay back the money. Right. So if you're doing that, then, yes, that makes sense. But at that time, instead of me buying Bit, instead of me buying real estate, I took money and I just bought Bitcoin and I started a business and it was the best decision I ever made. And from there, we went from three grand to five grand the 10 grand, the 20 grand, $69,000. And you know, the whole time I was online promoting and telling everybody to buy Bitcoin, telling everybody to buy Bitcoin. They didn't want to listen. We hopped on me and British and countless other people on the clubhouse room mm -hmm. every day, buying Bitcoin, encouraging people, educating on pit, educating people on Bitcoin, the wallets, you know, the same dumbass questions every day. What wallet should I get? What wallet should I get? Should we buy Ethereum? And, you know, some people have to mm -hmm. learn the hard way, you know, and I did get into shit coins and I did lose a lot of money and I did trade and I lost a lot of money. But I feel like everybody, not everybody, but majority of the people need to go through that to understand, you know, yeah. what Bitcoin is. And also then, you know, why Bitcoin is not crypto, of course. And um, yeah, I think that's great. I love, I have, I have a few things that like pique my mind. I love that everyone says you have to do the work, right? That's right. What, what is the work? What is the work? Like, what is, is that like learning and unlearning, uh, challenging yourself? Like how you hit the nail, what would you say Absolutely. is the work? You hit the nail right on the head. It's unlearning and relearning because everything that we taught is a lie. And I actually learned that. I actually learned that at a young age by watching, you know, side guys and all these other videos and, you know, the, the conspiracy theories that they call people crazy, right? They're not crazy. Conspiracy theories are more closer than the truth than what we're being told. 
So I learned that our society and everything that we learned, you know, was a lie. So I had to unlearn, you know, we're taught that credit is bad. We're taught that, you know, buy everything in cash. We're taught to, we're taught to buy a home and get a 30 year mortgage, even though you pay the mortgage off, you pay the house off damn near three times. And if you don't know how money works, you don't know that you're supposed to buy investments to pay for your liabilities. You know, you're just going to continue to do what everybody's been doing for the last, you know, century, right, in America. So you have to unlearn mm -hmm. all the brainwashing, all the – what would be the correct terminology for that? It would be – Well, you start thinking for yourself in a sense, absolutely, right? Absolutely, the condition. Like really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you have to start thinking for yourself. And, you know, most people aren't ready to, to do that, unfortunately. So when you try to orange pill people, like what's what's the biggest? Uh, I want to say pushback you get, but more like uh, I don't I don't know if pushback is the word. Yeah. Like I like the hesitancy, right? Like uh, I think with Bitcoin, there's a lot of things that you can like logically explain. You know, like oh, the the financial system works like a, but that doesn't really make sense because etc. 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 Right? But then that is just what it is right it's not even your opinion you're just sharing h how you have understood you know that it now works but in my experience like a lot of people think like oh whoa holy <laughs> holy moly <laughs> you know like that that's that's really uh confronting my current beliefs yeah, right yeah. and so they they kind of get on a defense in a sense like what's your what's your experience there like how do, how do you mitigate that uh, or try <laughs> yeah uh and i'm very like i'm very um brash and i used to be way more like aggressive mm -hmm. and way more brash so i've toned it down a lot trust me um but you know i've to to i usually just give them bitcoin right and the biggest pushback i get is the unit bias they think oh i have to buy a bitcoin i don't have thirty thousand dollars i don't have twenty thousand i don't have ten thousand i don't have five thousand they don't have nothing right a lot of people don't have anything unfortunately but this is why I, I talk the way I talk, because for me, it's just an excuse. But I feel like it's the education that needs to be done first. However, you know, if they buy stocks, if they buy. If they buy stocks, then they should have an idea um, on, about investing. And a lot of people don't buy stocks. It's a, it's a very, very small percentage of people that are investing mm. um, in the in the middle class. So I would usually just give them Bitcoin, right? I say, hey, it's 10 bucks for your Bitcoin. Hey, watch it go up and down. Watch it go up and down. And a lot of people also got burned, right? A lot of people got scammed, right? A lot of people bought Dogecoin, Shiba. A lot of people buy Bitcoin and they send it to somebody else that sends them a DM and says they can make their, they can turn their 500 bucks into $10,000 in a week. So, you know, a lot of people got scammed that way. So they're turned off to the space. They lost money with, like I said, um, Dogecoin because of Elon, so they're turned off to the space, and they don't even really want to hear it, you know, at the end of the, at the end of the day. However, you know, once I give them some free Bitcoin and I say, hey, inflation is real, because I I tell them, hey, you know, the gas, how much is gas now? How much is your groceries now? You know, the same twenty dollar bill is not buying as much, and I just try to explain it to them in that way, educate them. Sometimes they push back, sometimes they don't. They get it. They a lot of a lot of a lot of times it doesn't click for them, you know. It still doesn't click, yeah. even though I give these examples. So that's why I just give them the Bitcoin, and you know they watch it grow, and then they and then you know when when it's their time, everybody buys yeah. Bitcoin at the price they deserve. So if they don't get it after I explain it to them, I've done my job. I think it's an interesting like team that's coming back in this podcast now. Uh, you're my seventh guest and everyone uh kind of mentions the same and it's starting to dawn on me more and more like we should ask more questions you know kind of like less explaining more asking questions because it also took you and, and me as well like a while to actually understand why does this thing exist right and why this exists is this exists is because there's a problem with you know how good the money is and most people don't know that so they first have to know then they have to understand right and then they have to understand also and bitcoin is just really hard to understand i think still 
you know, that that is a possible solution, right? So there's like three steps and usually, you know, we begin somewhere within these three steps. <laughs> we begin to, we begin to talk, you know, but, uh, I think, I think a lot of people realize later on, like, okay, I know it, I believe in it. I think everyone should have it. You know, like, I think, you know, even like what you say, like if you use strong language or you're a bit aggressive, like it's just because you know, and you love these other people, right. And you just want them to know as well. Right. Like I, I, I think, and I experience the same. It's like a very altruistic feeling because I think like, I'm good. You're probably good. You know, like you just want other people to, be good. to understand as yeah. well. Right. And that is just what takes over this kind of like enthusiastic talking type way uh, while you actually have to just be really chill and just ask questions like, do you think it's okay to, <laughs> to pay five times more for your cucumber or your bread or your, you know, um, whatever you uh buy buy in the store right o over the over the years and then explain like okay like then you have like a little thread that you can basically pull from and just you know start uh answering questions hopefully uh there right absolutely uh, i think you're absolutely right asking questions and letting them kind of figure it out for themselves um like mm -hmm. you said it's it's not it's not that i'm that we're brash, right? Or we're aggressive, it's we're passionate, right? And some people may mistake in our passion for, you know, being lewd or being aggressive or being brash, right? Um, and maybe sometimes it's both, right? Yeah. Maybe sometimes people are just fucking idiots, right? So a lot of people are stupid, right? So we have to keep that in mind too. A lot of people are just stupid. So at the same time, <laughs> it's, a, it's like a balance, right? We have to find that balance. Yeah. Well, sometimes I think like, is it because I also know a lot of super intelligent people that also don't want to get it, right? So sometimes I think like it's not really about intelligence. It's really about, you know, do you have the capability of challenging your beliefs, mm -hmm. right? And think that, think like when someone tells you like, oh, well, the government influence the money, influences the money in a very bad way and the consequences are on the citizens, you know? Like when you say that, even now when I say it, I feel like, that sounds very bad, right? So it's, uh, and it's just hard for people to believe because they maybe they think like, well, if I would be in charge, I would never do that, right? So I cannot imagine that someone else would do that, but it's not really in a, this is not my opinion, what I just said, it's just how it works, right? So there's not really, there's it's not really a discussion point. It's kind of like, you know, here's the fact, but if you are not able to, well, receive the fact, that fact and then kind of like integrate it and challenge <laughs> what you thought was true. Yeah. Then it's, it's a really tough conversation, right? Absolutely. Um, a lot of, mm. like you're absolutely right. A lot of, a lot of very intelligent people, or we would say they're intelligent, right? Maybe because they have a degree or that they went to Harvard or they're economic, they're economic. They went to school for economics and they know, how this system works and you know the bankers people on tv you know the newscasters you know they all it's crazy how they know nothing about what we know and i feel like bitcoiners are some of the smartest people on the planet because we really are in my opinion and it takes it definitely takes a lot of self-reflection. It really, it's really a mirror to yourself and to your soul. Like you said, you have to challenge yourself and what you've been told. And even if you, even if you <clears throat> disagree, you still need to, you know, check out that information to verify a different point of view. Yeah. And that's why also Bitcoin maximalists are very mentally, mentally uh, intelligent people because you know there's Bitcoin SV, there's Bitcoin Cash. There's shit coiners shilling you shit coins all the time. There's there's that doubt, right, that comes into your mind like, oh, my God, is, is Bitcoin really going to be the real Bitcoin? Is, is there going to be another Bitcoin? Or, you know, just all these different mm -hmm. attacks and self-doubts and, you know, shit coiners and the economy and people, the news and just so many ways that you're being attacked that's going to test your test your conviction and test your faith and test your knowledge. And if you don't know what you're talking about, you're not going to be a Bitcoin maxi and you're just going to fall whim, right? And probably get scammed and you're probably going to buy Shiva Inu and get and get rug pulled or you're probably going to buy Dogecoin because Elon tweeted it at 70 cents and then get rug pulled. 
and then you're back to square one. You either turned away from crypto mm-hmm. in general, or then you become a Bitcoin maxi. So what what do you think is like the biggest hidden thing or risk in like the traditional financial system that most people don't know or, or that they overlook? That when you put your money in the bank, it's no longer your money. Also, saving money is probably the dumbest thing that people can do. Um, and rich people don't save money, which, you know, I just shared a video about that as well. And I've been saying that forever too. But, you know, I think the biggest thing people overlook is when they put their money into the bank, it's not your money anymore. They lend that money out to investors such as myself and other real estate agents and, you know, other business people as well. And again, fractional reserve banking, you know, they lend that money out 10 times. If you put a hundred dollars in, they can loan out a thousand. And then uh, again, if you save money in the bank with inflation going on, you know, what are you saving your money for? Just sitting there losing money. You're supposed to make your money work. Of course you want to have, you know, maybe a, a, a rainy day fund that's different from a savings account, right? Cause you're saving, what are you saving for? You should be, your money should be working for you because if you don't, you're not going to beat inflation. The best savings account is giving you 0.001% or 0.1% or even 1%, right? In a whole year, Bitcoin is up a hundred percent, almost a hundred percent in less than a year. So people don't even do simple math. In America, people are just, you know, slow like that. I don't know why. but Or they just want security, right? Mm-hmm. It's not about being slow. They're more secure, right? Because Bitcoin fluctuates, they're more at, they're more adept to, you know, just be secure. And so they want to be safe. And when you play it safe, you're going to get, you're going to yeah. get hit. And that, does this also tie into, I saw you shared, I think, I don't know, I think in your Instagram, like people, People pay too much for their homes, like you just also said. It. Like, can you explain that? How a mortgage works, like actually works, and maybe a funny story, like why also I started this podcast or how I got into Bitcoin. I was thirty and I had a mortgage, and I was working at a bank, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> and I talked to uh, I talked to a colleague, yeah, and he said, "Did you know that the money in the bank is not yours?" And I said, <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> and then uh, we had a conversation for an hour and then he explained to me how it worked. And then I was like, okay, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> like I'm participating in this system, but I have no clue. And I also had a mortgage and I knew, you know, you pay interest on your mortgage, etc. But actually what well, wasn't that bad with me because I had a really low like rate, mm-hmm. but let's say on a yeah hundred thousand dollar mortgage you probably pay like 135 ish on 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 100 000. so you pay like 30 percent more 40 percent more um well and i see your face maybe it's more no, I mean, America, I'm, I'm saying, that's but, good that's good if you got what you got that's great. well but still but still but still you know i think the question is like okay th- that's apparently the reward that a bank you know, earns because they give you the money for that uh, amount of time. So, you know, apparently it's how it works, but I think there's a lot of things with Bitcoin and then I'll let you answer. Like there's a lot of things that are like with Bitcoin, so many things in the traditional financial system kind of sound stupid, right? Like what I just said, like if I, if I borrow a hundred K and I have to pay 130, 140 over for years, like, is that justified? Maybe it is. I, I, I don't know, but like, it's not really explained. It's just like, this is how it works. Do you want it or don't you want it? You know, there's just like a yes or a no, but you, you don't, you just don't understand, but you still do it. Right. Absolutely. Um, I was saying, I made the face because like I said, I think that's pretty good because here in America, you know, interest rates now are a little bit higher now. So they're about eight, nine percent. Um, the example mm-hmm. that I tweeted out was, I think was a four or 3% interest rate and at a three or four interest rate over 30 years, again, you're paying for the house damn near three times, to- literally damn near three times, like two and a half times. So yeah. you, there's ways to mitigate that by, you know, making extra payments each month or each quarter to pay down, you know that interest or go directly to, you know, principal because a majority of your payments, like you said, go to straight interest only. So, you know, 
especially those first couple of years, I think it's the first 10 years of your mortgage goes straight to interest. So if, if you don't, most people don't know and they don't care. And, you know, <laughs> real estate agents don't tell you that mortgage brokers don't tell you that, like you said, <laughs> and you just, you just into it. And uh, unfortunately, yeah. that's the way the cookie crumbles. And so what is wealth for you then? Wealth is great question. To me, Bitcoin is wealth, right? Bitcoin is so many different things, right? And for me, wealth is Bitcoin because Bitcoin is going to be able to be passed down to generation to generation. And as the generations receive that Bitcoin, right, and we educate them on Bitcoin, it's going to be abundantly worth more, infinitely worth more as the generations grow go on. So for me, wealth is just being able to have freedom and not being able to not being not being tied to the system and being able to do what you want when you want and you know being able to pass that that generational wealth which is that freedom down to you know your kids your kids and your kids kids does that tie into like uh, i like what safe dina must um when he talks about like prioritizing f i think he says something like future security over over present happiness like short term short term time pref like short time preference versus long time preference mm -hmm. what do you think about that absolutely I, I actually use that analogy as well with my credit repair program and you can use that with a lot of things in life right um if you go to the gym you know you're not gonna you go to the gym one day you're not gonna see results you know you're probably gonna have to if you want to get depends depending on you know your diet and what you're looking to accomplish you're probably gonna have to be consistent in the gym six months to a year um, if you want to, if you want to build wealth, it's not something that's done, you know, in one year, two years, it's a long-term game. It's a long-term goal. It's a long-term game. So, you know, absolutely. You gotta, you have to think about the future. And I think once, once I had a child and I know you have kids as well, once you have kids, it, it kind of clicks for you. Um, and a lot of people, you know, now are not having kids due to financial reasons, which I can understand why. But I think a lot of people don't um, that don't have children are not they don't really care about the future because they're they're trying to make it make it them trying to make it through you know the day or the week because a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck and you know when yeah. when they're in that survival mode they don't they don't want to think they don't have the capacity to think about the future because they're trying to survive you know week to week or day to day. Do you think that's also then why? We talked a bit about the rappers impressing us with all the stuff they buy, right? Like, is that also why people are like attracted to that? Like that they think they also need stuff and then they start buying stuff, right? Like, uh, I talked about that this in the previous episode as well, like that because the money is kind of broken and people have like this, therefore also this short time preference, they spend it on stupid stuff basically. I think it has a lot to do with um, self-worth um, mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe the brain. Yeah, I think it's really about self-worth and the conditioning and programming of the of the youth. I think if we were taught better things and, you know, listen to, you know, different things growing up, we wouldn't have that need. But I also think it's it, it's again. A lot of people don't have self-worth in themselves, so they look for things to buy that's going to validate them, not knowing that it's not going to validate them in the long run. Yeah. Um, which, like by other people, you mean then? Absolutely. Um, mm. I also, and that's exactly why, you know, and, and again, I used to, you know, Little Wayne, and we all know Little Wayne, Snoop Dogg, we all listen to, you know, all those people, but, you know, what do they really, when you, when I listen to like some of the, that music now, now that I'm, I'm 34. So now that I listen to mm. some of that music, I'm like, yo, we used to listen to this. Like, we used to say so. Yeah. When I was 16, yeah. damn. <laughs> I'm like, I would not let my son listen to that at all. Um, Thinking about Lil Wayne, Amelie. Amelie, Amelie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when they buy, you know, cars and they say buy everything cash and, you know, they're talking about women and, you know, drugs and, all that stuff, all, all that stuff is, all, everything is a net negative. Like it's negative. There's mm -hmm. nothing positive that comes from listening to that music. Um, 
I guess besides the hustler, hustler's mentality, right? And the hustle and, you know, to get money, right? But if you're getting that money mm-hmm. and you're spending it, right? Because the, 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 the saying is, I'm going to get money yeah. and get money fast, blow it fast, right? I get it. I'm going to get it mm-hmm. and blow it in because I'll make it right back. Like, that's not the way to think about money. So that's actually pretty dumb, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh my goodness. But but uh, I I want to touch upon this. Like I love rap music. Like I was a I was a I was who <laughs> I was like a village boy. Yeah, who doesn't? I was like a village, like a white village boy with a thousand people in the village. I was just listening to rap all Absolutely. day. So it's not this is not like to 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 diss the rappers, but I find it so interesting that uh, like also what you said, like it influences culture so much, right? And like this showing off, but I don't know. Now that we're talking about this, it, like some stuff just really doesn't make sense. Like it's not cool. It's actually fucking stupid if you make a lot of money and you blow it all. Like it's, it's really, really dumb, stupid. right? But buying a car. But, now, but why? As soon as you the stupid also weird. The stupidest yeah. <laughs> thing you can do is to buy a car. Now. And I say this, and I say this, and you know, I I say so much that it probably it gets lost in the tweets, right? It gets lost in the post. It gets lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the dumbest thing you can do is to buy a car cash. First of all, when you buy a car cash. As soon as you drive it off the lot, it loses value. Yeah, yeah. Second of all, I think of a little baby. A little baby. I spent five hundred racks on a Lambo and didn't even know how to make that motherfucker go. <laughs> think about that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, sorry. Finish your sentence. No, no, you're good. You're absolutely. This is a good subject. I, I, I think this is a good subject. It's so interesting. Like, why? But why is that? So logically, it's kind of stupid to follow <laughs> that advice, right? But it does influence like society in a sense, right? Like, and even like, of course, I I observe America from a distance, right? Like Twitter, but like I see these videos of people in the club. They are like buying crystal or champagne. They're pouring it, like they're pouring it pouring empty it, to battle. It. Like they buy it. It's like three hundred like, dollars, well, right? Cause... Can you can you elaborate on that? Like, uh-huh. do you know what's going on there? Like, why is that? Is that a thing? I don't know. <laughs> the reason why, yeah, it's it's oh man, it's a. It's a great topic. It's a great subject. And like you're saying, and it's, it's the culture. And I think it's, if we want to get, I think it's a, more of a spiritual thing. Um, I believe in God mm-hmm. and I believe in, you know, I believe that there are forces out here that's going to, that's trying to, you know, sway the youth and they've done a good job. And <clears throat> I think that when you buy a $50 bottle of alcohol in the club for $300 and then you pour it out and then you buy another one and then you pour it out and then you throw money, right? And then you're throwing money in there making it rain, right? Unless you're a smart business person and you're writing that off, that makes sense, right? Like networking expense or what? <laughs> like what do you which, mean? <laughs> which I hope they're doing because that would be stupid as hell if they're not. That would be great. Or marketing, marketing expenses, expenses in the sense exactly. if someone films it. Yeah. Absolutely. That makes Teach sense. Teach the man. Preach this, please. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. If you're doing that as a marketing expense, and if you're in like an upcoming mm. rapper and artist and you're doing that, you can also you can also write that off as an expense. You should have an LLC. You should be operating as a business in general. <laughs> and you should put your car in the business, right? And that way it's a write-off and that mm-hmm. way you save taxes and, you, you know, that you know all that good stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's really just the influence and, and to and to you know get the youth lost because again if you're if you're drinking all this alcohol you're smoking weed I used to smoke weed and there's nothing wrong with smoking weed right you can smoke weed if you want I don't anymore I used to smoke because I was 14 and I actually quit this year because um, I, I didn't want to smoke you, anymore uh, yeah and that's fine if you smoke I no I'm not hating on smokers I used to smoke all the time I love weed but you know I stopped. Um, but if you're drinking, it, 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 it impairs your decision making, right? And then you're smoking weed, right? And then you're popping pills, right? And then you're drinking lean, right? Because this is all the things that they promote, right? And they make it look mm-hmm. cool. So all the kids that are 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, they're seeing you guys do it and they look up to you. So now they think it's cool. And now they're drinking and driving, popping pills, all this crazy stuff. It's a net negative, man. And it's really just to sway and to, you know, get our children lost, man. And, you know, ever since I, I had a child and, you know, ever since I've come to that realization, man, I call out rappers all the time. I used to call out Meek Mill. I used to call out Soldier Boy. Mm-hmm. I used to call, I used to call out anybody, you know, all rappers, you know, in general. But, you know, Meek Mill would be online talking about Dogecoin and all these crazy. I'm like, bro, stop it. You're going to get everybody wrecked yeah. and you got everybody wrecked. So what... 
last thing about this when i talked to british huddle uh, huddle in the in the first episode of the podcast he said something about you know like every everything bad or everything also bad with like culture societies like downstream from the money is this also then like one example of that in a sense like the broken yeah how do you say like the broken example basically for the youth let me think about that for a second could that could that be i don't think i don't think that's because of the money I think that's a moral and spiritual uh, attack, you know, um, mm -hmm. which leads into the money. And the, I think the money is, is a part of it, but I don't think it's because of the money. I think it's really a spiritual attack and a, again, it, it's something to dis pretty much destroy our, our community and the kids, right? And to lead us on, a, on, on the wrong path. So I don't think it's the money. Um, For say, I just I just think it's like like the evil evil powers that be, right? They mm. then they and so <laughs> yeah, they don't want you to win. They don't want you to win. So, how does Bitcoin then change your thinking? Like, what topics does it touch for you? Um, it changed my thinking because, as we just talked about, it. it um, I went from thinking about, you know, buying Louis Vuitton, Gucci, you know, being being a rapper myself, you know, I used to, you know, I like I like nice things and it's nothing wrong with buying nice things as, as long as you can afford it. Right. But I think the way to go about this is to first buy assets or start a business and then, you know, then you can buy all your toys. Right. And it changed my thinking from buying I don't even go shopping like that anymore. If I shop now it's for my kids, it's for my girl. It's you know, I really don't buy anything for me. Um so it changed my mindset on, you know, buying frivolous and stupid things, right? So now I don't buy mm. I don't buy anything that I don't really even things that I want, I'm like, do I really want this? And even my girl I'm like or do I buy more Bitcoin? Exactly. Even my girl I'm like, you know, we should have just bought some more Bitcoin instead of going out tonight. But mm. you know, I love taking my girl well, out and whatnot. But besides that, man, I don't buy anything for me. Honestly, it's very recognizable. Like I got some nice watches and I have twenty pairs of sneakers, but now I live like a monk almost, like very frugal. Absolutely. You know? But it's it's really about um I I, I have the same thoughts, like do I wanna buy this or yeah like why do i actually want to buy this you know like i start thinking like what like, to do what like do i need another this or another that but yeah it's interesting i also really like what you just said about just like this spiritual part like i i i feel the same uh actually like like uh, another episode with mark we talk about this like the spiritual journey into into bitcoin like well what what can you share about that because you mentioned it a few times and i i It's funny, like you're the seventh guest, but I see so many overlap between like the journey people have from doing the work, but also seeing this spiritual part and challenging yourself and letting go of certain beliefs and stuff. So like, what's your, what's your uh, point of view there? Yeah, um, Bitcoin is, so I believe in God. And, you know, back when I was younger, I used to do a lot of, I used to drink. I used to, you know, take Xanax. I used to smoke weed. Um, I used to party a lot, right? And during my experiences, I took ecstasy. You know, I've done a lot in my days, and um, I and I could have died a couple times. And I thank God that you know I know it's God because trust me, I could have died a couple times. And I know if it wasn't for God, then I wouldn't be here right now. So uh, during my adolescent and my younger years, I I took um, shrooms. Right, I, I'm sure you're familiar with shrooms. Mm -hmm. So I've taken shrooms and that opened up my mind and helped me to understand and, you know, look at life differently. And I also microdosed as well um, here and there. So that really helps me, you know, stay humbled and stay grounded. And Bitcoin is, it just really reveals who you are because as you just mentioned, it makes you think about things that you really didn't think about before. And it makes you question why, like you said, why do I want to buy this? And when you start asking mm -hmm. yourself these questions, like why am I, why am I thinking 
that I need to buy this and what is making me want to buy this. It it makes you take a deeper journey into yourself and it makes you realize that you're programmed and that you've been, you've been brainwashed since you're a kid. Okay. You like, like I have a nice watch on, I have a nice ring on, but you know, do I need this stuff? No, I don't. Why do I want it? Because it's shiny, because I've been told, because of marketing, because of commercials. Because we've been brainwashed. But still, right? Still, I, I, I find it interesting. Like, I have to say, like, you know this, but you still have to watch. Like, I understand, I'm not judging. But it's interesting, right? That it's still, it's not fully away or else you would have sold it, maybe, right? Like, like it, it's it's very deeply ingrained. Mm-hmm. Um, I bought this watch a long time ago. So this watch is it's not a new person. No, no, it's fine. Like, it's not about the watch, but yeah. I think like it, it's just... I know that was just my point. Like it's just ingrained, like very deeply, right? Like I know I'm not gonna live like uh, you know what what was Steve Jobs doing with his mattress and like one plate and a fork? <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, yeah. or, or 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 like these funny memes like on Twitter. Like uh, uh, nowadays, guys live like with yeah. <laughs> you see like this blow one up bed and, and like a TV <laughs> and a PlayStation or something. Like no, no, I, that's that. Like yes, you could go there, but. It's more the point that it's so deeply ingrained, right? And that it's so deeply ingrained that you have to you have to actually go on a journey in a Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. And then another thing as well is 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 this tied to traveling, right? Because I travel a lot, and um, I went to Jamaica, I've been to Cancun. I want to go to the continent of Africa and visit a, a few countries there. But you know, when you travel, like, and I say this all the time that Americans are spoiled rotten. And I guess the Europeans as well. I'm not sure how spoiled you guys are because I'm not a, I'm not a European. Probably, yeah. yes, yes. Compared to these... I say yes. Absolutely. Compared to, you know... 100%. Compared to Africa, compared to Jamaica, Mexico. You know, you don't realize mm-hmm. how good we have it until you go to these countries, right? And you see how people live with way less than us. No AC. They don't, none of the luxuries, none of the luxuries, nothing. No. And they're happy... And we're here in America, spoiled rotten, and we get pissed off if McDonald's gets our. Uh, I don't eat McDonald's. Yes. But, you know, people get mad yes. if, if their food's messed up or. <laughs> the Clown World videos. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I. Dude, seriously, like, I said this in the previous episode as well. Like, I realized that my uh, upbringing, like the millennials, especially in Western Europe and also America, I think, but. but let's say in Western Europe more, we had it like the best anyone has ever had in the entirety of humanity, <laughs> right? So yeah, like I know, so I, I and, and I, 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 I know, but I also think that the traveling, as you mentioned, like that really helps in perspective. I don't know if I really like integrated this, but I do know that I'm very, very lucky, right? And that other people, have had way 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 uh, worse and i also feel that it's kind of uh for me that is with bitcoin like it's a responsibility to help other people like i feel inclined almost to do that or at least try to do that right so just like this podcast is just i'm starting out i don't know what i'm doing you know and just see if we can reach more people like that 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 will be great it's, and yeah collectively, interesting huh? absolutely and collectively we all mm. play a part in you know orange filling you know, the masses, but, you know, I, I highly yeah. recommend that you, you know, if you haven't gone to, you know, Mexico or, you know, any, just any third world country or just anywhere that's not, you know, if, if, lux, if luxurious is what we have, where we have it and how we have it, you know, it, it, it'll make you, you know, I'm a, I'm a sensitive person, you know, so, you know, I went to Mexico and, um, Isla de Mujeres, it's, it's like, um, it's like a little island, right? And I was walking down the street. And the person I was with at the time, or the girl I was with at the time, you know, uh, I had on this nice, it wasn't a Versace, but it looked like a Versace shirt. It was a nice shirt. And some dude was like, hey, I like your shirt. And I was like, you really like it? He's like, yeah, I like it, man. And he has like, he has like the most raggedy clothes on him. Like, oh my God, I like wanted to cry. And I'm like, I just took off my shirt and gave it to him. Yeah, well, like, what am I doing? Yeah, like, right? Like, oh my god, yeah. let me. I gave him the shirt, and he almost started crying. He's like, "You really giving me this shirt?" I'm like, "Yeah, man, it's just a shirt, man." That's I, wild. I have a closet full of shirts that I don't even wear. You can have this shirt, and I'm walking around, and then after that, I'm just walking around like, "Man, we got it made." And you know, I went to Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I went to mm. Jamaica. No, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no problem. I went to Jamaica on a cruise back in 20, probably 15, 16. And I went to Jamaica, you know, they're chilling in the hut. They're chilling in huts, right? They got clay, clay houses and it's hot as hell. They have no AC, but they're happy, man. And, you know, um, I have some friends that live in Haiti and, you know, he goes down with all of our old shoes and all of our old clothes that we hate and that are dirty. And he goes over there and they're ecstatic and they're crying and they're happy and he gives it away and we don't even like it and we don't even wear it and they have nothing on their feet. They're barefoot. They don't have any clothes. Mm. They can barely eat. So, you know, once I once I experienced that, man, it, it really changed my, my perspective on how we live and that's why I always that's why I talk as much shit as I do because we are really spoiled in America and we don't know how good we have it. Mm. Yeah, I fully agree, man. I I think it's really good to like take moments like this and actually think about this, yeah. right? Because we are just doing our thing and every day is another day. Yeah, bro. <laughs> this phone is a thousand dollars. I'm on another phone. Yeah. Wow. It's a thousand dollars. These kids don't even have mm. phones. You know, we complain, oh we lo oh I don't have Wi Fi oh I'm losing service and we get so pissed and we're so irate <laughs> and they don't even have internet. I have to think of, I think it's Louis C.K. Or, or, or Bill Burr. They have like, I think it's Louis C.K. He has like a bit where he says, you know what I hate? When you're like on a plane and there's Wi-Fi and then there's people who pay for the Wi-Fi. Way too much money, right? For the Wi-Fi. And then he starts complaining that it doesn't fucking work. What the fuck? I just paid and the Wi-Fi doesn't work. And then he says like, Seriously, think about it. You're in a plane, <laughs> in the air. There's Wi-Fi. You are able to pay for the Wi-Fi. <laughs> and you're so privileged and, enough to complain. And you're so complaining about that the Wi-Fi in my plane towards my holiday destination does not <laughs> work like, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to think of that. That's, yeah, but it's good to think about that. Like, also, sorry, like, I, I love the psychedelics topic. I can talk for days. But I wanted to ask you, like, is that, like, a way to... I don't want to call it a shortcut because I, I, I also think psychedelics take work, actual work, but it is a way to like humble yourself when you come from a privileged place like America or like a, West, uh, a Western country. What do, what do you think of that? Like, I just had to think of that. Like it helps you for the perspective in a sense, right? Helps you like zoom out, see your place in the world or the infinity of the universe, basically. You hit, a, you hit the nail right on the head, zoom out. Because that's exactly what happens is that you zoom, you're, you're, you're lifted out of your body, right? And you get to see it from a different perspective. You're also connecting mm. the neural pathways in your brain and you're using different parts of your brain that you never used before. And you're activating different parts of your brains. And, you know, it. it when I've taken shrooms before, there's been times when I've taken shrooms and I've been, and I cried the whole time and I was just out. It wasn't a sad cry. It was a, I'm so thankful. Relief. cry. Yeah. It's a yeah. It's not, not a relief. It was a, I'm so thankful cry because whatever it is that I was thinking about at that time, it was the complete opposite. So it brings you to a place where I think it brings you to a place where you need to need to be right. And not to take shrooms to like OD and trip out and, you know, be, be messed no. up on it, right? Or go to a party yeah. or something. You take no. it to, yeah. you know, you take enough maybe. For me, mine is like three grams, three and a half grams is the eight. Maybe that for, for some people, that's maybe a little bit too much. Two grams, three grams, hey, that's enough for me to, you know, get a nice, you know, a nice trip is what we call it. And, you know, just, just breathe, right? That's exactly what yeah. you do. You just... Take a deep breath and relax, man. And you go sit out in the porch, right? And you go sit down and you calm yourself and you just you just ugh, relax, man. And it's the best thing I've ever done. One of the best things I've ever done is, is taking shrooms, man. It just yeah. enlightened me. I feel more and more people are are into this and, and in and like researching and wanting to try this. I actually just had a friend over, he's like uh forty eight and he was like I want to try, I want to try this together once, you know, and I said, okay, 
yeah, I'm, but I'm really excited. He said, I said, okay, well, we can do this. But, but like, even like all these, I don't know what it is, but I think like people need currently, like there's, there's kind of this, I don't want, I don't know, like this undertone of people that like want to know more about life or something, right? Like they realize that it's just going every day. And then at one moment it's two weeks later and they're like, oh damn, like this is another two weeks gone by. Like what kind of like what? I want to say like, what is going on? You know, like they want to take this moment to reflect. And I think, yeah, the psychedelics just really help you to gain like a new, new perspective, kind of like take a, I don't want to say take a break, but just stand still for a minute and take that moment. Be right? still. And it gives you another level of, of appreciation. And I'm just thankful, you know, that I was able to, you know, embark on that journey and, I don't think I would be the same person if I didn't. And I, I, I encourage everyone to, you know, don't take too much. If it's your first time taking it and you're watching this, just be careful, you know, and don't no, take, you got to lean into it. Yeah, you got to lean into no. it and be in a, take it in a, yeah. on a good mood. Don't take it when you're upset, you know, and I highly recommend that you, you know, microdose if you, if you're able to do so. And, you know, I highly recommend that you guys just take that spiritual journey and, look deep within yourself right and, and reflect and like you said take it take a deep breath and be still because we're moving so fast and i actually just got off the phone with one of my friends and i've been telling him to buy bitcoin and i've been telling him to fix his credit and a lot of my people that i know a lot of my friends that are that are very close and i don't have a lot of close friends because you know i tell the truth and a lot of people are offended by the truth unfortunately um so my close friends that i do that i'm cool with you know i'll fix their credit for free and I've been telling him to send me his ID and so I can do all this stuff. He still hasn't done it, but I was on the phone with him today and he said, man, I'm just tired of paying bills. I'm tired of working just to pay bills and this ties back into Bitcoin. And, you know, I explained to him why Bitcoin's important again and he's been stacking a little bit and he said, man, he's just tired of, you know, working to pay bills to, and being stressed out and, you know, just going through the motions of life. And like you said, one, 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 one minute you're here and then, next next one one day you're 16 years old next day you're 30 right like you time is yeah <laughs> time is an illusion yeah. man and so uh, to hear him say that it just reminded me of me right and it reminded me of bitcoin and saying uh. that we are tired of the system and we're tired of being manipulated and we're tired of being exploited and we're going to fight back and that's with bitcoin and so what's 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 your shortest answer to how, how Bitcoin can contribute to personal and financial freedom then? Like I said shortest because I think you can probably go <laughs> for long on this, but like what's the core of that, I'd say? Let's start let's start with what is yours and then I'll go. Because I don't I don't I don't I'm not sure how to how to um frame I'll tell it. you. I'll tell you. So when I realized that the money in the bank wasn't mine and I actually read up on it like how it works like <clears throat> my con my conclusion that when i put my money on the bank i basically borrow it or i lend it to the bank they borrow it for me that's contractually so i sign for that actually when i open an account and then they try to make more money of it right like that's their business model which is fine because i think uh, banks started as like uh, a credit facilitators for businesses, etc. Like I think that's necessary. Of course, now there's all these other things you can you can think a lot of that. But let's say you know that's just their business model. But when I realized that when it goes great and the bank makes a lot of money, I don't see any upside of that. Right? Only only the people who hold their stock or get dividends like they they see the upside of that. But when it goes bad. I do, I do get like, uh, <laughs> you know, the results there, right? So uh, for people listening, like uh, in, in America, you have the FDIC insurance, right? Up until, I don't know, well, now it's kind of like a battle how high it can go, but let's say 250K for now. In, in my country, it's 100K, right? So if the bank loses your money, quote unquote, you get that money back. That's the insurance that is there. But where does that money come from? Oh, that money comes from the government. Where does the money from the government come from? That comes from the citizens, right? So when I kind of like went through that and thought like, hmm, I don't want to participate in that, not like in an anti-bank way, but I, it just doesn't make sense for me. 
And so when I realized that there's that my money or or that what I earned was trapped in a system that I couldn't really like rationalize and agree with to participate in that sense, and I knew about Bitcoin and I learned more. Then when and this was my biggest one of my biggest like clicks when it clicked was hey I can move that what I own to another place, which I can argument is prov- provably better. And that has given me a lot of freedom in a sense that I'm a pretty risk averse person. And I once heard also someone said like, you, you have an extra job that you don't know you have, right? Like you have to mitigate the risk of having your money in a bank and due to inflation and debasement, it's melting away. Like you, that's why people invest in stuff or they do like these stupid stonks or stupid meme coins or, or whatever, right? So you already take risk because you have a job or you have a venture or something. But then when you come home, you basically start your second job, which is taking more risk <laughs> to mitigate something that is happening by default, right? The, the the debasement of the money is a programmed thing in a current financial system. And yeah, my my conclusion was, I don't want to do that because I'm not a risk, <laughs> risk taking guy. I want something boring and safe. And that's actually why I'm in Bitcoin. And that is what's given me a lot of freedom in not having to think about other investments and stuff. I don't have any other investments, basically. Yeah, that's gave me freedom, freedom in my mind. And also eventually, well, what we just mentioned, like I, yeah, I just live like I don't have the Bitcoin. I live pretty frugal and yeah, that's it. Awesome. Awesome. I try. It's hard though. It's still hard. Like it's, I, I, I have the same kind of like beliefs as you, right? Like to buy stupid stuff sometimes. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think that's what's given me freedom. Like just less to think about. Like there's less in my head. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I think that's a great way to put it in. I'm sure there's a lot of people that can relate with that as well. And like you said, if you're not risk adverse and you want to be safe, right? Bitcoin is the way to go. And not only is it, safe it's the best asset ever on planet earth ever 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 i don't know why people don't understand it's the best asset ever that's ever okay been. and why why just say one sentence why <laughs> well it's a, yeah, that's a challenge i know yeah that's a challenge the best asset ever <laughs> bitcoin is freedom yeah yeah go ahead no yesterday i tweeted to someone like bitcoin is the thing no, no, wait, I have to say it correctly. Like I, I, I want to look up the tweet, but I think it's like engineered, the closest approxi- uh, um, approximation of engineered truth. That's what I said. And so it's code. It's just code. It's just rules, open rules that anyone can adopt if they want to. And if they adopt it, they have to play by the rules. If they don't play by the rules, they cannot adopt it. Right? So it's just that thing. And you have to agree on that thing that's why i say truth because it is that and you accept that or you cannot play that's why i call it truth and that is just it it's just a set of rules and you you can do whatever you want uh you can adopt it or not but the thing just keeps on going like it doesn't care if you adopt it or not that's right sorry but i want to didn't want to interrupt you no you're good so when i bitcoin for me when i learned that again the money's being debased we're being duped we're being stolen from our children are being stolen from uh, the banking the banking cartels you know abuse us um the governments abuse us uh they lie they steal they cheat and they smile in our face and lie on media all day once i figured that out and i saw the light and i learned about bitcoin and and figured out that I can escape the system, escape the matrix and, you know, have something that I can actually own and move it without permission. I'm, I hate asking for permission. So Bitcoin is permissionless, freedom, power, wealth, and so much more all in one. And once you understand that and once you grasp that and once you have conviction, you'll get Bitcoin tatted on you, right? (laughs) Even on your face, on your arm. And uh, you'll stack away and you won't, you won't, you won't, you'll have laser eyes, right? Or focus, right? Laser eye focus Uh on Bitcoin. And 
I highly recommend everybody just stack some Bitcoin. And, you know, if you guys have any questions or, or concerns, you know, make sure you hit us up. Uh, Bitcoin for Millennials, thank you for having me on. It's been a great hour session, great hour talk. And uh, I congratulate you for your new podcast. And I know you'll do a great job of, you know, orange pulling the masses. I'll try, man. Thanks so much for being on. I have one last question Absolutely. And I, that I ask everyone. Absolutely. What's, a, what's a core belief that you will never let go? Ooh, let me think about that one. Core belief. I have a few, but I'll just stick to this one. There's no white. There's no black. There's no purple, yellow, green. We're all one humanity. We're all one, in, we're all one human, right? There's one race, the human race. And we're all one, one color. That's the color orange. We're all Bitcoiners. And we're all Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> I love I love that man. I actually want to add something to this. I've been waiting actually to say this. Like I want to spread this more. So I have a son. He's five years old, right? He's seen tall people, small people, fat people, thin people, and like he was he was watching something on Netflix, like some uh, animation thing, like a bunch of different children, like right, like six children playing with each other. And I I asked him like, who do you like the best, or like who do you like the most? And then he said the girl in the red dress. And it was a black girl. And I thought, this is so amazing, man. This child is five years old and he does not see color. Color, seeing color or judging on color is the most stupidest thing ever. And I love that you talked about this. Like, again, like he sees all these different types of people. He has never, ever said anything about skin color. Never. And that's just, you know, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, the, we have to listen to the kids yeah, <laughs> like what is going like what is going on so i absolutely love that you that you talked about that because that is i love that that's the love man so that's a that's great the love ending that we yeah that's a perfect ending and that's the love that we need in the world you know and there's so many things that they try to divide us with with race and color and ethnic religion and where you live and all that it's like oh my god no we're all human we're supposed to love each other and, you know, all of us collectively, you know, God made us all right. And we're, we're all together, God. And, you know, we come from God. So I think that's just how we should live, man. Like I said, uh, we're all orange, we're all Bitcoiners, and we're all Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. So where, where can people follow you? I'll link to your YouTube and your Twitter. Uh, like, but, like, what's the best way? Uh, I'll send you the links as well. And, um, yeah, so my music page is Chris Knight 407 My... Bitcoin page is at sign Bitcoin Chris. On Twitter, it's Chris Knight 407. Instagram, Chris Knight 407. That's why I'm going to send you the link. It's a lot. And then um, you can just click the links <laughs> down below. And then Facebook, it's um, official Bitcoin Chris. Awesome, man. Well, uh, let's stay in touch and uh, talk soon. Absolutely. Much respect. And thank you so much for having me on, brother. Thanks, man. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke, that's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.